What's wrong with you? I don't have your recovery, Red. You should have come in for a splash. I can't swim. <laughs> <laughs> Fix me a meeting with Parker and Tom Bridges for five this afternoon. What else do you want me to do? Uh, sit quiet, keep out of the way. Be enough rumors flying. Well, I can always go and see. Do what I told you. Sit quiet and hold the fort. All right, Gavin? Don't go righteous on me. Doesn't suit you. Well, what if I need you? Cool. And whenever anything managed to have itself built, the Welsh came and knocked it down instantly. Oh, excuse me. 75 pence. Thank you. Do you want a bag? Yes. yes, the Vikings invaded, and the Scots regiment laid siege in the Civil War. Thank you. Now it's just tourists looking for cheap food and clean loos. I call that a turn for the better. Bye-bye. <laughs> Thank you. Good morning. Can I help you? I shouldn't think so. The range is not limitless. Well, neither, fortunately, are people's requirements. Where would that go? Where, indeed? Were it not fastened to the room behind? You don't sell cigarettes? We don't. If you want cigarettes... I don't smoke. I'm so glad. Yet you sell newspapers. Newspapers don't kill you. They just make you ever so slightly nauseous. Morning, Sandy. Good morning. All right, perfectly. Morning. Oh, hello. Wasn't expecting to see you this morning. You could have come round for a coffee. Sandy, you've heard me talk about Eric. How are you? Hello. Come on, I'll buy you a coffee somewhere. Sorry, Sandy's been on her feet since six. I can manage another hour. <laughs> Why don't you have a cup of coffee here, then Sandy can put her feet up. What is this obsession with my feet? Come on through. You see? Your curiosity is about to be assuaged. Who's the old comedian? <laughs> Sandy. She's a widow. Her husband was someone big in the cathedral. She does the early morning papers. Don't know where I'd be without her. What are you doing here? You've never shown any interest in my little shop before. Boy's voice is breaking, he says. What happens to the scholarship when he leaves the choir? We'll manage. From this place? I don't know how it covers the rates. It's amateur. It's a joke. We'll get a reduction. Mark works in the school. Perks, you know, like you admire. I need some perks to put up with all that. <laughs> well, now. And I thought I'd never forget the signs. It's our old friend, the whiskey hangover. Not as nasty as the red wine hangover and less lasting than the gin. That just made you feel sorry for yourself. This shop should be a gold mine. Yes. Well, I'm not an Eric Palmer, am I? I prefer a few genuine friends around me. I prefer my family. This place may just have to do better. I told you, we'll manage. Get the deed of settlement out of the bank. Go over it with the solicitor. I did go over it with the solicitor when it was made. That was my solicitor. That was our solicitor. What a very satisfying institution divorce can be.
to get long holidays, too. We thought uh, you'd be heading back to civilization as soon as you could. Country, nice day too. Thought I'd enjoy myself. Finished here? I've got quality, then practice. Come on then, give you a lift. I've got my bike. I'll get someone to ride it back for you. Oh, great, thanks. See you, Mark. He's got to change his shoes. Break that business of hers, do you? Elizabeth's old curiosity shop. She likes it, that's the main thing. Have a good game. Enjoy yourself. Sir. OK, Gordon. Come on. That game you're in looked the right mess. No, only at the end. You know, scrapping. What are you doing Saturday? How do you mean? Well, I know you at school in the morning. Today. Do you want to come out somewhere? Where? Wherever you want. Get away from that car! Sure you don't mind skipping lunch? Yeah. Mum's at the shop and Mark's not on lunch duty. What's wrong? Well, they might not like it. You know, you and me. Don't worry. Bye. Bye. Hey, Tim, are you coming to tea? Changing. Who's that? Mind your own. You've cut us back as far as we can go. I'm in grand trouble with my district convener as it is. I know, Tom. I'm grateful for the cooperation. So what are we saying? Do we take it from this that we're finished? We'll be talking redundancies very soon. Talking on employment, you mean? It's a mystery to me. I saw you yesterday morning. You were hopeful for this Caltrax contract. Now, what buggered it up? I want to know who buggered it up. Take it easy, John. We've all got a lot to lose. Eric, we're not prepared for this. We should have been warned it was a possibility. Come on, John. We all do our best. Wages assured, do you say, Eric? Three weeks. I'll push the bank to keep checks on and all I can do, I'm doing. When's our next meeting? We should be meeting daily from now on. Fix it up with Mr. Freeman. Tell us straight. Are we finished or do we have options? Nothing's impossible. That's not good enough. This firm's been kept in the dark too much. This firm is my bloody life, man! The moment you can say as much, I'll take you seriously. Fix up a meeting for tomorrow, Gavin. Christine's got the diary. No miracles, then. We've used up the quota, Tom. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Eric turned up this afternoon. Where? Riverside. Did he see Tim? Yes, he gave him a lift back. What did he have to say? Not much. Did he see you? Called in at the shop. And? And saw me. Last night, 
Trattoria Musica, this afternoon whooping it up with ten-year-olds. Eric must think I'm some sort of superannuated prepubertal. Hello. Hello. Winston, please. Supper is soon. High tea could have already gone. This house is mad. Oh, how much did we take today? Oh, we took fifty-eight pounds. So I took it. Uh -huh. yeah. I hear Eric brought you back from Riverside. In the car. Flashy, flashy. I hate the car. It makes you sick on corners. It's just meant for people to look at and admire. I mean, it's just the sort of car here to have to have, you know? We sang Wormsley and Dee tonight. Didn't recognise you. Changed in the bus station, Bob. Sorry, toilet. Hate school uniform. Couldn't do my hair. At least it's not plastic with all that glue stuff. Get in. No, it needs gel. Really, it does. All clear. You'll get bored with me. Everybody does. Same with me. Must be hereditary. Where are we going? We're going to Gloucester. Pater. Papa. Unpair. Me o Papageno. I made that one up. never come to a place like this. His idea of a brilliant meal is scorned sausages or a couple of cheapo hamburgers. Don't be a snob. I'm not. I was just saying. I didn't mean anything. What's up? Nothing. It's these shoes. They really tightened me, that's all. I've had them for ages. Oh, I see. We're talking new shoes, are we? What do you mean? I was going to suggest a wander around a few clothes shops. If that meets with your approval. Yes. Goodbye. Now then, young man. What do you think? Even the zips have got zips. If I go out in a thunderstorm, you're a walking lightning conductor. Really? It is very fashionable, isn't it, sir? You're the one that's got to wear it. Keep it on. Better not. Thank you, sir. Are you sure your mum won't mind? Or Mark? I'll say I bought it from someone at school. We're always talking like that. It's really, you know, thanks a lot. That's Peter. No one could be sweeter. He's a bold Peter. He couldn't be neater. Look at his ankles. Where is Peter? I bet his car's a two-seater. <laughs> <laughs> you having fun? Dacor, yes. Are you going to kidnap me again? Please, promise. I'm your wicked old dad. He never keeps his promises. Or hasn't your mother warned you? <laughs> Come on, say goodbye to Peter. Something. You can ask. You won't get in the mood with me. I won't want to do that. Why are we doing this? Why now? Exactly now. Let's find some tea. It's like riding a bike. <laughs> <laughs> 
What is? Questions like that. If you think they're too hard about what you're doing, you fall off, get yourself clubbered. Mark always answers questions. Yeah, it's his job, answering kids' questions. I'm not a kid. He's good to you, then, is he, eh? Mark's all right. Fun? Yes. <laughs> Don't like talking about him. Good boy. Only it's my day and your day. We should do this again soon, you reckon? You live in a nice place. I might join you. Don't panic. I don't mean at the school. You'd like that, wouldn't you? Find a business and a house in the town. D'accord. What's the matter? Nothing. What is it? Only... No, it doesn't matter. I can get you back for the service. No problems. Only half past three. Only... There's this practice at four. I can't get you back by four. No, it doesn't matter. D'accord, had a problem. I'll see what I can do. Get in. Why don't you say? I'm changing the car. I wish you'd told me earlier. I forgot. Anyway, didn't want to spoil it all. You know, you and me. It's not the end of the world. You're missing a rehearsal. You'll see me shot at the old circus. Yes, sir. Don't change. Quickly. Sorry, sir. You should be setting an example. You are a top four. I've given your solo to Fielding. Now, get yourself robed. Hey, Tim. Fielding's seen your solo. Well, didn't he, sir? He was brilliant. <laughs> anyway, I think we did. Hello. Oh. What's chasing you? Good service. Been busy today. 55, 65, 75. Done the coin? Not yet. Mm -hmm. 
you. What for? Helping. I'm very fond of him. He's always been such a wonderfully loyal member of the choir. Anyway, Mark, since he's usually such an honest lad, I thought that something was worrying him, and you ought to know. Thank you, Ralph. As for the other business, well, I'm... No, uh, leave that with me. Ah, good evening, Elizabeth. Hello. Hello, Tim. Yes, sir. Well, Mark, I leave the matter in your capable hands. Good night. What's all that about? Tim, would you go and wait for me in my study, please? Tim in trouble? What's he done? Nothing. Shall we go in? It's uh, just a choir matter. Don't go forgetting that's your son in there. I'll tell you about it later. I'm going outside, remember? Did you tell me? Yes. Oh, look, why didn't you come and join us? Well, Matron's going to be alone in the senior house, and I said I'd stay near the phone, in case. In case of what? See you about 11. Mr. Barton tells me Miss Quietie and practice. Yes, sir. I think he and I deserve an explanation. Forgot the time. Well, that's not like you. You're always moaning about the young ones turning up late. You're supposed to set an example. Yes, sir. I don't believe you forgot the time. I did. Is your watch working? Yes, sir. Where were you, Riverside? No, sir. I'm waiting. Oh, sit down, Tim. One of the many disadvantages of having me as your stepfather is that after 28 years of schoolmastering, I know when the truth's being told so little, it's hardly the truth anymore. I did forget the time. What were you doing? I was with my father. Not a crime? I went with him to Gloucester. That's not a crime. But you've let people down, Mr. Barton, and you might have let your mother or me know your plans. You've got responsibilities, Tim. This jaunt to Gloucester, was it arranged before today or did your father just turn up? It was arranged. When? The day after my birthday. Well, why didn't you tell us? I knew you'd hate it. Well, you must apologize to Mr. Barton. I don't want anything like this to happen again, all right? Yes, sir. Fielding, Tim. Mr. Barton was told a tale by Tony Mells. He puts no particular faith in it, but even if it's only half true, it shows you up in a nasty light, doesn't it? How should I know? Fielding told Mells... Fielding likes to get people's attention. He's always making things up. He doesn't like me because I'm a top four and he's not. Do we have to do it this way? What way? Why should Tony Mells lie to Mr. Barton? Mells likes to creep round him, being big. I don't know why you want to believe Fielding over me. He's really insulting about you behind your back. He calls you soft shit. You'd tell me if anything was wrong, wouldn't you? I don't like this, Tim. Whenever we've had disagreements before, we've always talked them over. Are you jealous of my father? Have you got homework to do? When people leave me alone? Then get upstairs and begin it. Showed up, I showed up. 
You're a cold fish, Gavin. Play cold, you're a cold businessman. You must be hell in bed. Hell's hot. Thank you. What had he done? I had to tell him off. Ralph Barton came over. Yes, I know, I saw him. Well, Tim missed a practice. He had an important part to sing and Ralph had to give it to somebody else. Oh, that's not the end of the world. He's not just any pupil, Mark. It's because Tim is who he is that he doesn't only have to be punished, but to be seen very positively to have been punished, all right? Oh, poor bloody kid. He arranged to meet his father and take a jaunt with him to Gloucester. He was late back, that's why he missed practice. Is that what he says? That's what he told me. Did you know Eric was taking him out? Oh, don't be ridiculous. Of course I didn't know. When was all this arranged? The day after his birthday. What else did Tim say? What did they do in Gloucester? Well, you know as much about it now as I do. You weren't going to tell me. It crossed your mind it would be better, easier, if I didn't know. Well, naturally, I'd tell you. Where are you going? Where do you think I'm going? I'm going to talk to Tim about this. Elizabeth, at the risk of being boring, he's only been out with his father. No, listen. We've always tried to be very easy about Eric. He's always been welcome here. You can't go blaming the boy for not seeing complications we have kept out of sight. Leave it for now. All right, you may be used to teenage adolescence, but I am not. If you want to shout at someone, shouldn't it be your husband? You are my husband. Ex... Ex-husband. Well, why won't you? Lift a phone. Put on your housemaster voice. It's all right, Tim, it's only me. Mom? Mom? What are you doing? I just saw your shape. You're in a spot of bother, then. What happened? Off to Gloucester with your father? Why didn't you tell us? I wouldn't understand. Too damn true. Well, come on, then. I want to know the whole day. It wasn't my fault. It wasn't! When my father came for my birthday, he said he wanted me to go away with him. But I said I didn't want to. But he said I didn't have a choice. I hate him in his car. I did lying and being late for practice. But when I told him about it, he just laughed. I'm sorry. Mark hates me. Mr. Barton hates me. Everyone hates all me. All right, all right. Now, Mark doesn't hate you. Nobody hates you. All right? Now, settle down. We'll we talk some more in the morning, all right? It'll all work out. It'll all come out in the wash. What? Right? What? <laughs> Sleep now. See you in the morning. Mum. Mm. Love you. I love you too. Shores of God and Jesus is um, marvelous, I believe.
cooperation concerning redundancies. I had a word with the area convener. He's not a happy man, Eric. But your record's a fair one, and he says he'll do what he can to help. I said to phone you at the works Monday. See you in church tomorrow. Don't answer that. Forgiven, all right, Dacor? Yeah, right. What did you think to the Purcell? Wandered a bit in the middle. I know. I'm sorry. I know, so am I. I know it was wrong, going out with him, missing tea in practice, not telling you. What about fielding? That's what really worries me. We had a row, that's all. I was really mad about him singing my part. But I didn't hit him. That's just fielding. It didn't sound like you. Anyway, sorry, Mark. You would tell me if there was anything I ought to know. I always do. True enough. You coming in? Only, my father says he's thinking of moving here. A house and a business, he says. See you, Mark. Did Tim mention anything about Eric's moving? Moving? Eric told Tim he's thinking of a house and business here. How do you mean, here? Well, how do you think I mean? Somewhere locally, in the town, I suppose. Well, it may just be Eric, I don't know. Stirring. What about his firm? Well, I'm telling you, I don't know. When Eric was here last week, the day after Tim's birthday, he made some sort of veiled threat about the shop. He told me to have our divorce settlement checked. But you've always told me the cash she put up for the shop was part of the settlement. It's yours. Well, of course it's mine. Oh, did you? Did I what? Well, check the settlement. Oh, don't go on at me. Um, it was only last week. Yes, I will. Well, so what are you saying, that we should suddenly be worried now? Oh, no, just forget I spoke. Well, we can always get the school solicitor to take a tooth comb to it. What's all this we? We should, we can. It's my shop. Where are you going? I promised the boys I'd open up the games cupboard. <laughs> Good God, no. Not even my best friend would ever call me the greenest-fingered man in the world. I leave all that to the gardener. Are you interested in it? Uh, very slow is horticulture. Absolutely. We like our interests fast. Hmm? <laughs> Still play squash? Still play squash. <laughs> Do sit down, Eric. Sorry we can't ask you to stay to lunch, but we've got these people coming over. Now, what can I do for you? Lend us 50 grand. Lend you 50,000 pounds. Lend the firm, yes. I imagine I must be a last resort. Have you already been to my fellow directors? You've been on the board almost 30 years. An appeal to loyalty, Eric. That's new. 
I had no idea that sentiment had any great place in your scheme of things. I'm willing to make a new approach to Caltrax. Swallowing your pride? Effie, I'm through with the banks. I want to go to Caltrax with 50 grand in my hand. My 50 grand? Yes, all right, Effie. Your 50 grand, but I want that contract. And if Caltrax have already decided that one brush off is enough? We'd be buying time. I'd be buying time. But for how long? And why? Effie. Don't trot out responsibility to employees or the importance of traditional craft training. <laughs> Good heavens. Things must be pretty desperate for you to come here proclaiming loyalty. What's in it for me, Eric? What do I get out of it? Ah. Effie. I beg you. You must excuse me. My friends have arrived. I'll use the tradesman's entrance. Eric, there may be something I can do. Give me a day or two. What would... Shh. I'll call you midweek. And are you worried? Yes, of course I'm worried. If he hadn't been hung over that morning and throwing his weight about, I'd never have known. Then there's all this trouble from taking Tim to Gloucester. And what does he mean by finding a house and a business here? I mean, does he mean here, where we're standing? If you're interested in the pendants, you can actually see them being made at the jewellers. Uh, there's a little map on the back of the card there. I just feel this need to confront him to say, I know about this and I know about that. And what the hell do you mean by making obscure threats to what is legally mine? I'm sorry, Sandy. I will calm down in a minute. How long? An hour to calm down? Oh, you could be in Birmingham in an hour. Go on, sort it all out. You can do the whole of tomorrow here, and I'll stay for the rest of today. If you don't get it out of your system now, you'll be moaning on to me for weeks. Anything to prevent that. Also, I thoroughly dislike Eric the X. You go. Now, Mrs. Palmer. <laughs> How are you making out? All right. Good. Hey, look who's here. Hello, Mary. Oh, Mrs. Palmer. Listen to me. Mrs. Palmer, you're not, are you? Well, how are you? Long time since you were here. Three years. We've seen some changes. If you come to see the boss, he works all he can from his house. <laughs> Don't blame him. You must get him down to see all this space. Well, he's done his best. Remember? Wouldn't be able to hear ourselves speak standing here once. You're well away from this place, love. Just look at it. It's a sad sight, the factory running down. How bad is it? Oh, bad enough. But we're not done yet. No. We've finished. Didn't you know? No. Here's for that lad of yours. He's well, is he? Give him this from Mary. Oh. He won't remember me. <laughs> what age is he now? What, what um... He's 13. Oh, good <laughs> Lord. Good Lord and Bob. Oh, I'll away and tr try and find the boss. It's good to see you both. <laughs> Take care now. Goodbye. Thanks, Mary. Bye. Oh, 
Well, nothing's changed much. Why should it? I am sorry about the business, Eric. I didn't know. Drink. Thanks. What's the problem? You told me to have our divorce settlement checked. I want to know why. You gave me to believe that keeping things flexible meant that Tim and I could come to you if anything went wrong. I never thought of it the other way around. I wouldn't do anything to hurt you or Tim. <laughs> if your pride's at stake, you'll do anything. You know it, I know it. What are you so worked up about? This new business of yours. What new business? The one that you told Tim about. The one that's going to be on my doorstep might even turn out to be my doorstep. What are you talking about? Look, Tim told us about your little jaunt at the weekend. And he told Mark that you were thinking of setting up a business in the town. Now, is that right? I mean, this new business isn't going to involve my shop, is it? Or be financed from the sale of my shop? I make hydraulic cylinders. Do you think that I could open up in business there in that twee bloody street? Do you think that I'd sell it against your wishes? Not stupid enough to believe that. What's all this about? Your hands off, Tim. Look, Eric. I've made a new life for myself down there. Tim's got new friends, new family, a real home. I know you. Hands off. Once! I've taken my son out once! And it upset him. And he felt he had to keep the whole business from me and his stepfather. And as far as we know, it's the first time he's ever done that. Well, the first time that he's ever lied to you. You're not simple mind enough to believe that. <laughs> the fact is, he lied. The old man you married down there, he'd believe it. Oh, that's enough. They're all like that down there, are they? Peter Pan's the lot. No, nothing. There's no cutting edge on any of them. And because I resent, yes, resent, my only son. <laughs> This. Yes, my only son, because I resent having him wrapped in cotton wool, made soft, taught there's no world outside, but if there is, it's nasty and unreal. I just want to see more of him, for God's sake. Your sake? For your sake? It's even business practice. If business fails, diversify. You are not diversifying into my husband and my son. We were all right together, you and oh, me. We so were! We spurred each other on. Look at us now. With you here, I could do anything. The good old days. <laughs> Why do you think we got divorced, Eric? Ah, oh, we never thought it through, girl. Could it have been the good old slaps you used to give me when you came home pissed from the good old club? Or the good old friends we never had? Or the good old threats to me and the child? Well, now you're safe. Home and dry on Fantasy Island, where grown men get paid for playing with nice, clean children, singing old songs in an old church. You are worth more! Ah, oh, you've buried yourself, girl. You've buried the boy. At least I kept you alive! For what? Worship of Eric Palmer, the true religion. I've outgrown that. With a man twice your age, you'd need to. That's... Cheap even for you. What's your sex life like these days, girl? Good bed talk. You tell him all those funny little things that in the shop, do you? You listen while he tells you what Jones Minor said to Smith Major. Get your juices going, does it? <laughs> Liz, what I was saying, you spur me on. I'm, I'm sorry, Liz. Uh, the shop's yours, stays yours. F forget all about it. It was a drink talking. Take these, will you? Look, a few things I bought for the boy. I want to see him again. I want to see you again. Uh-huh. 
hullabaloo is in progress near my hallowed portals. It was Fletcher, sir. He wrote a word on the board. I didn't, I sir. saw him do it. You didn't. I got detention. Yeah, I no, saw you. Yeah, no, no, no. One at a time. Minutes. One at a time. Caton, speak. Mrs. Gale thought it was me. I shall inform Mrs. Gale of your views, Caton. Thank you, sir. Thank you. The Wanderer returns. Yes. Enjoy your day. Fine. I was just talking to Caton. Do you know Caton? He was telling me today that in class, little Terry Fletcher asked oh, if he could see... Let's go and help Sandy clear up. 